So then we're going to remove the um, the, the nut, this, this worm drive off the end of the crankshaft, uh, which drives the oil pump. Uh, and this is a left-hand thread. So again, we're going to use the zapper gun. So it's like the, the nut is integral with the worm drive. It's all one, it's all one piece. And it screws on the end of the crankshaft and so we need to get that off uh, and it's a left hand thread and uh so i'm going to lock the crank uh gonna lock the crankshaft by putting the rod back through the uh, small ends again and then see if we can get that nut off okay uh i've locked the uh i've locked the uh, crankshaft by putting the rod through the through the con rods again, a bar through the con rods and uh, protected the crankcase uh, with the towels and rags in this case. I've got my zapper. It's a left hand thread. I'm getting confused by all these uh, thread sizes and that, by the way. So I just took off the oil pump and that appeared to be a half inch UNF. And now I'm undoing this crankshaft and that appears to be a half, a half inch Whitwood. And then someone wrote in and said that the cylinder, the cylinder barrel uh, studs, the base studs, they're all actually um, half inch uh, imperial, half inch UNF. So you know, and then, so some of us, we've obviously got half Whitworth and half uh, UNF. All right, let's see. Give it full power. And there it goes. I did have to give it full power on the thing, but the thing is, it is a left-hand thread, and it appears, and that was a half-inch width socket. Okay, so obviously very important to know that that is a left-hand thread, and because the, the thing is, it's not marked. Now on the Triumph, you'll always get an L stamped somewhere on the edge, which makes sense, but the doesn't seem to be any stamping there. So unless you read the manual on that, you could be trying to get that nut off for a long time. Okay, uh, where are we now? So then we're going to take try and take off the uh, right the uh, camshaft. Uh, we've got the. Let's have a look. Yeah, so we don't have to take the tensioner off first. That's on the idler. So that just slides. So we've got to take the camshaft nut off. Uh, we've still got the chain connected. So lock, we'll still be able to, uh, we're locking the uh, engine through the con rods again. Um, but I'm fairly sure that's a right hand, no standard right hand thread. So I'm going to, I'll have to move the con rods round. So they seat in the opposite way. Otherwise, as soon as we turn that, the comrades will pop up and they'll be all damaged because they're locked, ready to undo the left-hand thread. And now I'm going to have to move them so they're ready to um, uh, to lock for the normal right-hand thread. Okay, we're all locked up again. And I'm now on a 9... What am I on? A 9 sixteenth width now. So it's back up. I'm still on width, width again. So we can take this uh, nut off. Again, with the uh, zapper, comes off easily. So that's the camshaft nut. And then we need to see if the sprocket will come off the end of the camshaft or not. Now, I think when I did mine, it came off pretty easy. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, again, I'm going to very gently, I'm going to get some get my dear old uh, tire levers and just see if I can pop that sprocket off because nine times out of ten the sprocket is pretty loose. Okay I'm just going to see if I can uh, encourage this uh, sprocket to come off at all. Hopefully it might, but 
following our experience with the uh, uh, front uh, front drive sprocket on the other side, which was so tight, I don't know that this will come off. I'll use a bit of rag if I can to try and protect the casing. A towel in my case is difficult, so I'll work around this bloody camera. The camera's right in the way. Certainly don't want to put any too much pressure on this, especially on ah there it comes. Yeah. Just an even portion of it of it came. What you don't want to do is obviously sort of leave it on this side too much for fear of breaking it off, but just an even no, of course. Yeah, that has sufficed to lock the uh, chain just because it's uh let's see if I can pull it off evenly there we go there we go and i'm just gonna hold it leave it in the chain for a minute just so i can check the timing okay yeah what i was saying before i just wanted to leave the uh, pockets in the chain just so i could check that the uh, the valve timing was indeed set correctly uh, as was and, and indeed it, it, it was set correctly because there's the timing mark that little punch there and then there's a corresponding punch mark on there and then there should be 10 pin 10 pins in between the two so we've got 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 okay so people say 10 links and all that. Well, the link is very confusing. So it's 10 of the actual pins. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, 10 pins, which shows that the um, timing had been set correctly. It all, all looks okay. Initial inspection again. Pop that down. And now we're going to take off the, uh, the tensioner. Cam chain tensioner here. And then we're just about done in here, apart from the dear old uh, crankshaft pinion here, which is uh, you need a special tool for, it, and we'll do that in a second. First of all, I'm going to take off the, uh, the tensioner. Okay, these off. There we go. Take the little spring washers off that are behind. Take off the first plate. Take off the actual adjuster, keeping it in the same order. And then take off the back plate. Yeah. So on this model, we've got thick plate followed by actual adjuster, followed by thin plate at the back, which I think is the, the correct order. I'll check on that. But it's things like that. You know, if you just pull things off willy-nilly and you haven't got the proper manual, when you come to put it back on, you suddenly realise, hang on, there's two plates and there are different thicknesses, which one goes front, which one goes behind. So it's simple things like that you just got to be careful of. I'm fairly sure it's the right order. We'll check, obviously, when we come to put it back. Thick, adjuster, thin.